everyone and welcome. I thought to begin, we'll just do a really brief, just like five minute meditation, just to kind of get the energy a little more centered, just to, to bring us here a little bit more. Alright, All right, so just find your comfortable seated posture. And you can just take a moment to even, you know, adjust your alignment, right, as your spine on top of if you are pelvic area in a good way. Is your spine long, not too rigid? Is there some space between the vertebrae? Right, does your chin need to be down just a little bit to open up the back of the vertebrae? Find your, your posture. And then I want to invite you to bring your awareness to your breath. Just let your awareness ride the inhale and the exhale. Use the breath to bring ourselves even more into our body, more into the present moment. And it's this dear, dear friend, the breath. And as you, you know, ride your breath and maybe you're coming a little bit more into the present moment and a little bit more into your body and you're letting go of whatever has already happened today and whatever might come, really giving yourself the gift of the present. And I want to invite you to bring your awareness to what is the quality of my awareness in this moment? Right? Am I, is it kind of jumping around a little bit? And, and if so, you can visualize like a deep cooling midnight blue in your mind's eye. Bring a cooling midnight energy to your awareness. Or if you're feeling a little dull, a little sluggish, you can bring like a, like a beautiful bright sun, bright yellow to your mind's eye and kind of revitalize and replenish your awareness. And whatever you need to do to bring your awareness maybe into a little bit more of a, a balance between calm, open, so uplifted. So just take a couple more breaths here. And then, you know, you can slowly come back to the room, but as you do that, um, I'm going to read the San Francisco Dharma Collective's guidelines for group communication just so that we're also setting some good intention here. Um, so the collective asks that we all speak from our own experience, use I statements rather than speaking for a group, even if you are a member of that group, and try to avoid assumptions. Practice active listening. It's okay to disagree, ask clarifying questions, and be curious without giving unsolicited opinions or advice. Allow others the space to participate fully. Use discernment whether to move up or move back. 
acknowledge we all have biases, conscious or unconscious, assume good intent, and realize impact needs to be equally acknowledged, explore using both and model, replacing but with and, acknowledges and honors multiple realities, ensure confidentiality, especially in affinity groups such as LGBTQIA+, or recovering Dharma Sanghas. So practice compassion towards self and others before speaking ask, is it true, is it necessary, is it timely, is it kind? All right, so welcome everyone. Um, my name is Fiona Brandon and I am a psychotherapist uh, in San Francisco, and I also teach um, contemplative psychotherapy at the Lawanda Institute for Contemplative Science, and I also direct their uh, compassion-based resilience training program. It's my first time here uh, at the Dharma Collective, so thank you so much for inviting me. Um, thank you for all your help in settling me in. Uh, I'm really excited tonight. Uh, I get to share a practice, um, the mentor bonding practice, that was one of the first that I was introduced to as a Dharma student, uh, which is about um, 20 years ago now. Uh, and uh, I study in the Tibetan lineage. So this practice is like an, a kind of a, an entree or a beginning into uh, tantric Buddhist practice. We're going to be doing, uh, it's a visualization practice. Um, and it's very dear to me for a number of reasons. Uh, it has been very helpful on my own personal healing journey. for those that are interested in meditation. It's a very powerful practice uh, for healing uh, a lot of attachment wounding, uh, issues around self-doubt, um, uh, the way we can beat ourselves up. Uh, we'll get into all of that. Uh, and then I also teach it as a part of the compassion-based resilience training groups. So I, I love this practice. Um, Noam, if you want to start the, the PowerPoint presentation, that would be great. Uh, and I'll just talk a little bit about what we're going to do, all of us together today. Um, so I'm going to give you a brief background in the neuropsychology of the practice. So I'm going to give you kind of a, a Western take on what they had figured out, you know, 2,500 years ago. Um, but I'm going to give it to you in some, some Western language, Western psychology language. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to take some time for all of you to be able to think about and find a mentor and an ally that you'll work with tonight. Um, then uh, I'm going to take you through the steps of the practice so you know what you're getting into before we go into it. And then we'll do, we'll do the actual practice. You'll get a, a direct taste. And maybe you will decide it's something, you know, you want to put in your toolbox of practices. Um, yeah, and then we'll have some time just to do a little writing so you can integrate your experience a little bit. And then we'll have time to just share, you know, uh, what your experience has been. But please, I want this to be a discussion, uh, you know, a dialogue. So just raise your hand. Um, for those of you that are online, Noam, you're going to need to tell me if they raise their hand because I can't see it. Um, but please, all of you that are joining us online, welcome to you. I'm so glad you're here. And, I, and I, I know that there are some familiar faces, so thanks for joining. Um, but yeah, please ask me questions. I'd love to, to, to hash this out and grapple with it with you, so let me know. Um, all right, Noam, if you want to go to the slide that has the medicine Buddha. Yeah, the next one. There we go. Um, 
All right, so welcome to the mentor bonding practice. And in a way, I kind of, I want to invite you to step into the imaginal theater of this practice, because we will be using our imagination. Um, and I put very specifically the Medicine Buddha there for all of us on this first slide to introduce the practice. Uh, because the Medicine Buddha is considered sort of the mentor of mentors. So kind of welcoming in one of my allies, one of my mentors. Um, so the, the mentor bonding practice, um, the sort of very high level basic framework of it is that you will choose a mentor tonight. And then the practice is to um, visualize sitting with this mentor and the object of focus is on the relationship between yourself and a mentor so you know in a way that maybe your object of focus in meditation is the breath like we did when we began this practice um, it's on relationship and what is so powerful about the practice is that in the relationship between yourself and the mentor being the focus, it is going to activate and um, enliven uh, your cognitive self, so your mind. It's going to activate your affective self, so your emotional self, and it uh, will also activate and touch into your visceral so your, your nervous system. So we're going to be working with, with all three tonight. Um, and what else do I want to say about that? Um, okay, so, so to kind of get a, a deeper understanding of why this practice is uh, so powerful and how it touches on those two levels, I do need to bring in a little bit of attachment theory and a little bit about human uh, development. All right, so now you can go to the next slide. All right, so we're just gonna kind of back up a little bit and we're gonna talk a little bit about um, attachment theory and why this practice is so helpful in terms of, of healing early attachment wounding um, and helping us uh, speed our, our human development into positive ways. So uh, in early attachment, uh, right, the way that we grow as human beings is in relationship. We do not grow in a vacuum, right? We grow based on our experiences with our early caregivers, with those who are around us, and this is uh, especially poignant from infancy to age five, we continue growing in relationship throughout all of our life. But I want to just really focus on that period right now. So uh, our caregivers, they are um, modeling to us about how safe is the world, right? What does it feel like to be in connection with another? Um, these experiences of connection um, and attachment with our primary caregivers, um, they inform ideas that we unconsciously start to create about ourselves. They inform the ways in which we understand uh, uh, emotions. Is it safe to have them? Is it not safe to have them? Uh, they inform us about uh, how we feel in our bodies. Is it safe to feel in our bodies? Is it not safe? Um, is the world safe? Is it, is it safe to connect? Because literally as infants, our, our nervous systems are developing. We don't have a nervous system that's fully grown. So we literally, as infants, we borrow our caregiver's nervous system so that when we're feeling dysregulated, you know, we're hungry, we're tired, whatever it might be, we look to our caregiver 
to take us in and soothe whatever reactivity we're feeling. So whatever our experiences were in being soothed, that's, that's what we start to learn about ourselves in the world. Um, right? Is it, is it okay to express big feelings? Um, are those received? Uh, do we have a caregiver who's saying, you know, I think you're angry right now. Tell me about it. Or do we have a caregiver that shuts down whatever our experience is? Right? And so this has a profound effect on, on how we um, define ourselves, how we relate to ourselves, and then how we relate to others. And of course, we then bring this into our adult relationships. We can go to the next that slide. Right, so um, most of us, uh, because our caregivers are humans, and they're doing the best that they can, um, but most of us, right, we do experience some level of stress from our caregivers, some level of dis dysregulation. Um, they also might uh, hold a lot of trauma in their nervous systems and in their experience, and that does uh, get passed down then to, to us as, as children. Um, and so they are unconsciously handing down to us some maladaptive ways of relating uh, to ourselves and to others. And then on top of that, right, then we have culture um, that can add to the problem um, because culture maintains systems that are oppressive, threatening, competitive to the majority um, of people. And so we're all pumping a lot of survival mode uh, in our nervous systems because of that. Um, and then what happens is that we start to over-identify with these negative messages that we're getting from the stress of our caregiver, from their dysregulation, from cultures, you know, uh, unconscious biases that are, you know, coming at us every day. Um, and, and then we start to over-identify with these negative messages and unconsciously, we're not aware of it, obviously, because we're infants or we're kids or we're adolescents. And we start thinking, oh, I'm too much or I'm not enough or I'm not lovable or the world's not a safe place, you know, et cetera. Um, and, and we, we don't know that we're creating this negative narrative about ourselves, but we are. And then we identify with it. This is who I am. And then we bring that into our relationships, you know, uh, as we move through life. Um, we can go to the next slide. So what is so incredible about this um, practice with a mentor is that it is a reparenting or a re-caregiver practice because it focuses on the relationship. This practice, we are in relationship with an idealized mentor, with a caregiver whose nervous system is running on bliss, whose you know, emotional state is one of unconditional love and compassion, whose mind is filled with wisdom. Right? And so the, the practice harnesses our attachment system. It harnesses the, the building blocks of human development, that of being in relationship with another, right? of modeling ourselves on others. Um, the practice uses this, right? This is innate in us. This is not something we have to learn or build. It's just here. So in doing the practice, it's like we're lighting up, we're firing up what is already innately in us about how we grow, how we change. Um, and it uses uh, that um, innate uh, way of growing um, to, to, to stretch us beyond any kind of limited sense of self and helps us grow into 
like a more expanded sense of self, like a self that feels like, oh, I have agency, I have choice. Um, and it expands us into um, entering into our relationships in, in a different way, right? Not from that kind of smaller sense of self, but into that sense of self that's like, well, if there's some conflict, let's grapple with it, let's see if we can move through it, um, right? But, but with, a, with a grounding that is more open, more spacious, uh, more compassionate. <laughs> We've got a lot, of, a lot of vitality going on outside, it's good. Um, right, and so in, in this relationship with our mentor, we're reparenting ourselves, and we are creating, um, through this intra-psychic relationship, we are essentially creating a, a, a refuge for ourselves, right? We have a relationship that we can go to internally 24 seven, right? If we're happy, we get to share our happiness. If we're upset, things are difficult. We have a place of relationship to go to, you know, for support. Um, we can go to the next slide. All right, so, so we're doing this, right, by, um, because as adults, right, we can consciously choose who our mentors are. And that's what we're gonna do uh, tonight. We get to consciously choose who our mentors are based on what qualities do they have that I would like, that I want to build in myself, right? So we get to consciously choose our mentors based on those qualities um, to be able to take those in and then use that ability to then, uh, those qualities to, to flourish, to expand our sense of self. Um, and so allowing ourselves to be inspired by our mentors, um, you know, who, who model this wise, unconditional care, again, we can really expand our sense of self. Um, and, and when we have this role model, this nurturing presence, uh, it sends top-down messages, meaning from our mind to our body, it sends messages of calming, of soothing, of care, um, so that we can really kind of let go more of these negative perceptions of ourselves. Um, so I'm gonna pause there for a moment and see if there are any questions. I don't know if anybody online has any questions. No raised hands. All right. Yeah. Okay, so now uh, if we go to the next slide, it is time to, to think about choosing a mentor, choosing your ally. Uh, and if you go to the next slide, uh, I put together some of my uh, mentors and allies just to give all of you um, a sense of where I'm coming from, right? But, but for all of you to think about, yeah, who is somebody? And it can be a historical figure. It can be someone who's alive now. Maybe it's one of your ancestors, right? Um, I mean, I have some artists up there. Maybe it's uh, somebody who's in your spiritual lineage. Uh, maybe it's a social activist who you feel really drawn to. I mean, really, the, the, it's the gamut. I do have up there also some, some Buddhas. Maybe they're um, in your spiritual practice. There are some, some beings that you feel particularly safe with, drawn to. Um, I also have the Tree of Life there on the slide. Uh, in, the, in the far corner, I have the Mama Nature. You know, it, it's really, who is going to bring me a sense of, of care, of feeling safe, of, of feeling a sense of unconditional love? So I just, you know, take now, you know, a few minutes just to, to think. Um, and, and, and I think what's very important to name is that some of our mentors, you know, they're human beings. We all have our, our, uh, our foibles. 
So the, the intention really is to think about, you know, if you're choosing someone who is human, what are the qualities, the characteristics in them that you love and appreciate and want more for yourself? You're not saying, I need to take in, you know, all of it, right? But I really love their strength, their determination, and the way that they show up for others. And so if you're going to use them in the practice tonight, that's what you're going to be focusing on, right? Um, if you're using, you know, a Buddha, for example, um, then, you know, it's not a human being. It is an idealized other. So, right, maybe that's what's going to work for you. But I'll, I'll pause. Yeah, please. What are your thoughts about animals? Oh, you know what? You want to use the, uh, the microphone so the folks online can hear you too. Hello. Okay. This is one. Um, what about um, animals or pets? Yes. Oh, about that. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So glad to bring you that up. Four legged so welcome. <laughs> Absolutely, right? If it feels hard to, to connect otherwise, <coughs> yes. Bring that beautiful four legged sentient being. Yeah. Really, whatever uh, makes you feel comfortable. And you know what? We're, we're, you know, this is a test tonight for you. This is like a little toe in, I should ask, is, is a better way to say it. So, you know, be playful with it too. It's, it's, it's okay to try it out, you know. Yeah. So, maybe I'll just give everybody a couple minutes to, to think through who you'd like to choose. One of those things that you think the the first answer is the best one. <laughs> yeah. Um, the question was: Is this one of those instances where the first one that pops in is the best one? Great. You know. Sure. Can deal with that. I'm sure, if that works. Some of us might need to mull things over a little bit. Folks online, do you seem like maybe a thumbs up, or do you feel like you found someone in the in the room, folks? If you wanna, you feel like you got somebody you can use. Okay. All right, great. How's everybody doing online? We got one uh, message saying that they got one. Okay. Great. No problems yet. Okay. Well, maybe as you continue to think, we can go. There's one more. There's another slide to go to, so maybe we can make our way. Um, yeah, so this slide just, you know, really talking about how, um, you know, in, in using our mentor to reparent ourselves and really taking in those positive attributes, that the, the role model, model imaging works because it's helping us to access new ways of reacting, whether that's emotionally, whether that's sensations in our nervous system, whether that's you know uh, our thoughts. It's going to help us really feel into uh, ways in which to be more mindful, to be more aware, and to. Um, use our neuroplasticity to be able to lay down new neural pathways, right, that are based on this relationship. Like, oh wow, this is what it feels like for my nervous system to be uh, in, in relationship with the blissful nervous system. I'm gonna hang out here for a while, right? Which promotes a kind of resilience that then when we go out into the world and something happens, 
we have that visceral sense of our nervous system running a different way, right? Or we have that sense of um, being able to slow down our reactivity, right? When something happens that stirs us or, uh, in, in a difficult or edgy way. Um, and, uh, and it really helps us to stop over-identifying with these uh, negative um, aspects of ourself. Um, and, and really helps us to stop the, you know, repetitious negative thoughts, negative beliefs, um, and negative constructs that we might hold within ourselves. Okay, so if we go to the next slide, um, I want to take you uh, through what the seven steps are of the practice. But let me just pause there. Are there any questions before I go on? Any thoughts that are coming? I know I'm doing a lot of talking to have to set this up, so, but it's, it's worth it, so, yeah? I have a question, but I don't know if this is the right time for it. Yeah. Um, I discovered recently that I'm not very good at visualizing, mm. and so I was wondering if you have advice for those of us who are not. Yes. Thank you so much. This is a perfect time for that question. Okay. Yeah. So if it is tough to, to visualize, um, even if you're just visualizing like a color, you know, or you're kind of energetically sensing into your mentor, you just have kind of a feeling for them. Yeah, this is so important. Do not get hung up on having to have some perfect you know, visual of them. Just do, do the best that you can. Um, but yeah, if it's just about, oh, I have this vague, there's like a, a golden hue, and I know my mentor's there in that golden hue, and if my nervous system can feel it, um, my mind can feel the mentor, but yeah, don't get too hung up on that. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so I want to just take you through what the seven steps of the practice are so that you do know uh, what, we're, what we're moving into. So the, the first step of the practice, we're going to be admiring our mentor, which means we're admiring the qualities that our mentor holds. Um, and, you know, it's, it's the process of thinking like, oh, yeah, God, it would be what would it be like to have those qualities for myself? And, and you're, um, you're really, it's a way to begin to connect with, with your mentor. It's sort of like a way to get the relationship going. Like, wow, you are so patient. I love that. Or, you know, wow, I, I love how you are so grounded when you, when you speak, whatever it might be. But it's a way to, you know, get the relationship starting. Um, and then the second step is, because of that sense of um, ad admiring their qualities, then you offer them something. And offering could be gratitude. Just, I just feel really grateful that you, know, you have stepped into this wise, compassionate way of being. Or it could be, I want to offer you 20 bouquets of my favorite flowers. Or I want to offer you my favorite hip hop song or I want to offer you the most delicious food, you know, my favorite, whatever it is. But it's, it's a way to extend, you know, gratitude to the, to the mentor. Um, and it's a way to, again, to start to feel closer uh, to, the, to the mentor. Then the next step is, uh, the, the traditional translation is uh, confessing. But um, that might have some <laughs> twinges of, of, of other uh, religions. So some people might prefer disclosing. So you're, you're disclosing to your mentor, you know, maybe some, some edgy things about yourself, some things you might feel awkward about, maybe some things that bring up shame in you. Um, you know, you, you're can. You're, you're offering these to the relationship, and your mentor is so grateful that you're offering this, and, and really just gives 
unconditional love, unconditional acceptance um, to, to your disclosing. And, you know, there's sort of this powerful experience of this is a safe place for me to, to bring all of myself. So again, here with confessing, confessing, you're deepening the relationship. And, and here is really, it's a turning point where um, because you're ex accepting this deep acceptance by the mentor, you, you are feeling a shift where you're becoming kind of more equal now, right? Because you start to realize, right, we're made of the same stuff. You might be a little further down the path than I am, but we are from the same cloth. Like those characteristics that, that you have, I too uh, am, am on my path to getting them, right? We're, we're, we're not so far apart. So, and then with that, then comes the next step, which is rejoicing. It's like, this is amazing, right? I, I can grow these incredible characteristics uh, for myself. And so in the, in the rejoicing, um, it's, it's about that you see the mentors accepting you, you're rejoicing that uh, you're on the path to, um, to bringing in, taking in more of these incredible characteristics. And then there's the requesting guidance from your mentor, and your mentor, of course, is delighted to be asked, then uh, you're going to be requesting their presence, meaning, can you just hang out with me 24-7 all the time? And of course, your mentor is delighted to do that. Uh, and then at the end, there'll be a dedication where, you know, you're going to, uh, if it feels right, you're going to dedicate your practice maybe to your ongoing growth, to the ongoing growth and healing of all sentient beings, you know, whatever feels right. Okay, so um, now we can stop the PowerPoint for the moment. We'll come back to it in a little bit, but let's stop the PowerPoint and let us uh, taste the practice. All right. How's everybody doing? Any questions before we dive into the practice? No? Good. Anybody online? All good online? Okay. I just had a bit of a question. I noticed that there was somebody sitting over there and they went that way in the kitchen a while ago and I'm just finding myself wondering, are they okay or, or did I imagine them? Or? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if Jimmy is going to have I'm sure they are. I'll check on them before you talk. I'll give you a check in case you can. Just have had his hand up. Thank you, Mia, asking to unmute. Hi there, uh, Fiona. My name is Keisha. Hello, welcome. Hi. Thank you. Um, I'm just reminded of... I grew up in like a, a Hindu Vedic tradition, so like picking an Ishtadeva. Ishtadeva, yeah. like, like the god of your of your fancy and then like oh here here's the projected ideal um and I'm, I'm really excited to see how like how you integrate this work with like working relationally because like I, one thing i struggled with was like oh just go to god or whatever the ideal is versus like oh needing or like wanting to work with someone in a therapeutic setting so i just wanted to share that yeah, so I want to make sure I understand. So you're asking how do, how does this get incorporated with my clients in therapy? I'm, I guess it was more of a comment of like I'm excited to see like how you how these things integrate and um, yeah, as more I just wanted to connect. Yeah, great. No, thank you. So at least in my own personal experience that by doing the practice over time, when, uh, when I have found myself maybe in a, in a little more of a edgier situation with someone you know, in life, or I'm feeling a little awkward, there can be kind of a spontaneous like, reminder of um, what it feels like to be with my mentor. And then somehow, my nervous system calms. It's like it's 
in, in a sense, I think at a very deep level, you feel less isolated and less alone in life. You know, when you have that refuge with an idealized other, there is this sense of being held by something larger than you all the time. So it's like whatever you're going through, there is this energy, these qualities, this mentor who's there, who's cheering you on. And, it, and it, it's very nourishing and can spontaneously arrive in situations in a way that can be quite surprising and incredibly helpful. So I'm just speaking from my own experience. Um, but yeah, I, you're, you're, you're about to, I'm curious to hear after the, the meditation, you know, what your experience has been. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for the comment. All right, so I see, I, I see there's a bowl here, so maybe I can start. Everybody can get into their, their meditative pose. So just take a moment to come back to your meditative posture. Take a moment to reconnect with your breath. And of course, at any time during this practice, if you feel uncomfortable for any reason, you just come right back to your breath. And do whatever you need to do to be comfortable. Right, that's the most important thing. So I want to invite you, if it feels right, to visualize um, a, a safe environment. And I'm going to offer one, but if it doesn't work for you, then you just put in one that, that does. So I'm going to invite you to uh, visualize uh, a, an island in the center of a calm and peaceful lake. And surrounding the island are gorgeous, high, high mountains with snowy peaks that are creating like this impenetrable, incredibly safe, uh, sort of energetic field. This incredibly protective, safe, energetic field. And as you see the island, you get curious. And it's almost like you're kind of gently zooming in to the island. You are coming on to this island. And you notice that at the center of the island is a phenomenal giant tree, just a gorgeous, stately tree. Of it that is in as beautiful branches with gorgeous leaves, and there's a wonderful sort of grassy area at the base of this tree. And if it feels right, I invite you to uh, visualize your mentor sitting at the base of this tree. Right, so let the mentor come into the space before you. And maybe the mentor appears initially as like a brilliant color of light, luminous and translucent. And you feel the presence of the mentor, vibrant and alive. Right? You, you feel the presence of the mentor like 
like a trusted, dear, dear friend. There they are. You are seated. They are seated. Seated across from, from you. Just take a moment here to feel in your body what it's like to just be sitting across from your mentor. Notice the twinkle in their eye. They have a smile on their face. They're so pleased that you've called to them to be with you. can notice any detail of the healing mentor's body, maybe they're, that they're wearing, anything that might be especially meaningful to you. And now I want to invite you to admire whatever positive qualities the mentor embodies that you yourself would like to grow more, would like to taste more, right? Maybe it's self-confidence or courage or wisdom or patience, compassion. Whatever those qualities are, let yourself really appreciate and enjoy those qualities in the mentor. See what it's like, uh, what your somatic experience is of this uh, admiring. And I want to invite you on an inhale to breathe in the presence and qualities of the healing mentor. And in doing that, feel your sense of self starting to be powerfully transformed. Maybe you feel a sense of open clarity and the willingness to access your clear and compassionate mind with the help of the healing light from your mentor's mind. It's like your, your thoughts and energy start to align with the thoughts and energy of your mentor. And you begin to, to take on, to embody more of your mentor's healing potential. It's all those inhales, feeling yourself transform. Feeling the healing potential you can access in yourself. And with the wish to be closer to the healing mentor, make offerings. Right? Maybe you're offering joy, gratitude, your favorite food beloved music. And whatever it is that you're offering, and offer it in abundance, right? And even just feel what it's like to offer something so fully. See your mentor's face just lit up with delight from your offerings. So pleased. And as you feel this deeper bond, as you see your mentor so just enthusiastic and appreciative of what you are offering, you can disclose to your mentor any shortcomings you might feel you have, 
any blocks or challenges that you might face. Maybe you can just focus. Maybe there's one thing that's really up for you right now in life. You can just offer that. This is this thing I'm really grappling with right now. And as you offer this, as you enter into this dialogue, with your human mentor. Your healing mentor lets you know that they see your suffering. They are here, they're witnessing your suffering. You are not alone in your suffering. Your mentor really understands, really gets where you're coming from. really sees where you are. Maybe there's some back and forth here. Maybe there's some dialogue. Maybe there's not. Whatever spontaneously comes as you share what you're grappling with and as your mentor receives it with love, compassion, care. So as your mentor hears you, accepts your limitations without judgment, and sees through your difficulties, your mentor sees you already through the difficulty, already having um, you know, been able to take on the qualities uh, that will uh, help you move through this difficulty. Right? Your mentor already knows and, and holds the confidence that you can grapple with and move through any difficulty. And so take a moment to notice again in your body what it feels like to have this ally, right? this, this idealized caregiver, unconditionally giving you just a big vote of confidence. Full, full confidence that you will be able to make your way and already sees what you look like when, when you've made your way. you to rejoice, right? Rejoice in this uh, partnership, in this uh, relationship, um, in this experience of communication, of, of giving, of receiving. Rejoice in feeling deeply into the positive qualities of yourself, uh, the positive qualities of your mentor. Uh, Right? without any sense of fear or inadequacy. Just really let yourself feel into, yes, I have these positive qualities that my mentor has. They are here. They are accessible. I can drink them in. Right? Allow yourself to, to rejoice in this abundance. Just notice what that feels like again in your, in your body, in your heart, in your mind. Maybe you're doing a dance, maybe you and your mentor are doing a little dance together, right? Maybe you're jumping up and down, whatever it is. But together you are uh, in this energy of um, compassionate, open uh, joy, happiness, a sense of being unburdened. 
and aware that you need support and guidance, ask the healing mentor, right, for explicit help and direction, right? Request inspiration to, to continue to keep finding the mentor's positive qualities within yourself. And your, your mentor hears this request and beams a beautiful uh, rainbow, uh, uh, an energy of rainbow light uh, into your heart. And that, that beam of rainbow light comes from your mentor's heart into your heart. And this rainbow light fills you completely with the confidence that you can transform and heal yourself. And it's like you're lit from the inside out. Ah, just let yourself feel deeply into this nourishing rainbow light. And let it nourish your nervous system. Let it nourish your heart. Let it nourish your mind. And I want to invite you, if it feels right, to think to yourself, by engaging in this process of healing, I'm letting go of my limited sense of self so I can now re-envision my life story from being that that was maybe a more awkward, um, a more edgy story into a journey of healing and transformation See yourself glowing from the inside out, this rainbow energy, right? And, and as you feel that rainbow energy inside, uh, maybe, right, you can allow that energy to ripple out and touch sentient beings everywhere. And this energy then transforms their well-being, helping them to move more closer to their full potential allowing them to connect more deeply to their true nature in just the same way that you are connecting now to your uh, true nature. And then all sentient beings send a wave of solidarity back to you, back to your heart in support and encouragement to continue along this path of clarity, compassion, and wisdom. Right? And then acknowledging that right, this is a, a rehearsal, right? You're, you're in the imaginal theater of mentor bonding, and that uh, this practice, in a sense, is like a, a, a simulation of your gradual self-transformation to a wise and compassionate way of being. And ask your healing mentor to stay with you to protect you, to guide you, to continue to transcend your limitations so that you can continue to take on more and more of the healing mentor's qualities. I'm thrilled to be asked. The healing mentor melts into a rainbow drop of energy that comes to the top of your head and melts into your crown, throat, and heart and it blends into your heart center and melts away any remaining negative residues and you know that you have access to this delicious drop of nourishing rainbow compassionate wisdom love energy And now just let yourself rest here. Just let yourself rest in this vibrant rainbow light and energy.
And now at your own pace, uh, you're going to come back and visualize yourself in your ordinary form. And you're going to let the image of your healing mentor um, uh, kind of uh, dissolve, almost like rain falling, you know, on the on the grass of the island, just sort of letting your, your mentor fade. But you're, you know that your mentor is now with you 24-7 all the time. Right, ready to care, always there to protect, always there to hear you, always there to console, soothe, always there to be in dialogue with you. And slowly, slowly, at your own pace, you can come back to wherever it is that you are practicing. And the soft focus you can gently take back in the room. Gently take in your surroundings. But really see as you come back, if you can stay connected to whatever energetic experience that you just had. And then I want to invite all of us, you know, just staying in that flow, um, I'm going to hand out some paper and pens and just take a few minutes and do some wild mind writing. Don't worry about punctuation, just whatever is arising for you right now. Just write it down. It's just a way to, to be able to integrate your experience. online. Hope you're doing the same. five minutes to do some writing.
So maybe take another minute to, to wrap up. So now I would love to open the floor to those of you online and those of you here and anything that you feel comfortable sharing uh, about the, your direct experience of the practice or any questions or, yeah, just want to open it up. Let's, let's hear. Here, there was definitely a lot of scratching and writing. And I don't like to go first because I feel like I take up space. And the old Wi-Fi, I don't want to keep taking up too much space. But just uh, beyond that, I just um, it immediately came to me that uh, my mentor was this person who actually was my first supervisor in my graduate program mm -hmm. at a treatment center at um, 9th Street that no longer exists. And, um, just, I felt so much, um, you know, when she was alive, she's passed away, I don't know, probably 10 years ago or something, but I always felt so seen by her and so, um, yeah, just entirely um, joyfully accepted. And the, even when the struggles that I was having, and it was just something about her laugh that was very full-bodied and, um, you know, just always, has never felt defensive around her, which is very unusual for me. And um, one of her, and she was just this incredibly bold. She just took career choices. It's like she actually dropped out of being a psychologist and ran and joined a clowning school in France. And it was just like, <laughs> you know, she was working on these clown characters, got a job teaching all, you know, performing for all the nursery school kids. Just like so bold and so brilliant and so um, sweet and kind. And um, yeah, so I just felt like that the, I mean, a couple of things. One is I felt like, oh, I really want to connect with people who knew her when I knew her so I can, um, you know, just see, revive that in me. And also a sense that, that um, as was always the case with her when she was alive, that she, that the struggles that I'm having that I shared with her were absolutely where I should be from her perspective. I was absolutely doing what I should be doing. And so it was just, um, yeah, there was just a sense of uh, the moment was exactly what it should be with her. And um, yeah, I really missed her. I really, really have missed her. I really regret that I didn't um, travel to see her when she was um, you know, passing away in England. So it was nice to see her again. So yeah. Maybe oversharing, but <laughs> no. Thank you so much for being willing to uh -huh. to really share your experience. I mean, uh -huh. it just you've given an example of just a real kind of visceral reunion. Yeah. Right. And I just appreciate uh, you being vulnerable and, and, yeah. and having sharing that with us. Thank you. For yeah, I mean, I, I feel a happiness just in hearing about her. She sounds amazing. Yeah. 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 Who else would like to share? Well, I will take your leave from a person who doesn't like to take up space to another. <laughs> so, there we go. Um, I also never share. Um, I guess an observation and then um, um, maybe a reflection that would be, I'd be interested to get your thought on. Um, the observation is that I actually feel like unbeknownst to myself, I do this process almost 
to the letter, but to the steps in the order every night um, with with my um, with my dog Oxford, who was passed, he passed in March twenty twenty three, but um, raised him from a month for four, he was fourteen and um, was boxer, and he was really um, he reparented me. So, you know, it is so beautifully um, exactly what I've been doing with him. So it was, it was, it was interesting to um, feel that there's maybe some inherent wisdom that was already there to tap into. Um, you know, I, I did notice uh, as I went into the meditation, um, Pretty immediately, I started to have a really somatic, like I was going over the edge of the cliff. And, um, and you know, just for the sake of the question and example, um, happy to share that, you know, pretty severe, quite early childhood attachment, mm -hmm. trauma, and neglect um, in my life, and from infancy one, very, very, very early. And I'm in a moment right now. Um, where things are very not good. Mm -hmm. And um, what I'm finding is that things start to break down for me in terms of, I can get beyond the, the stories. So I can kind of zoom out 3,000 feet, see, ah, that's a story, that's mm -hmm. a story, not mine. I can see where that came from, et cetera, et cetera. But, the the very somatic, deeply ingrained, imprinted nervous system mm -hmm. patterning and conditioning that happens on a very primal level. Mm -hmm. It's you know before you step in, you step go to step in front of a bus and you jump before you know a bus is coming type of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like my my nervous system response is a couple steps ahead of me, even acknowledging that there's a story or not to be had. If that makes any sense. So. Um, yeah, I'm wondering your thoughts, I guess, about how to maybe implement these types of practices, uh, almost in like an amped up, you know, uh, the deeply ingrained pattern defenses in mind. You know, if you have any thoughts or suggestions. About yeah, that. That was such a powerful question. Thank you. Yeah. Because um, I think you know, the majority of us could could use. Right, so nourishing to our nervous system. And so there's a lots of different ways to, um, to get into that deep level of the primal visceral nervous system. So it could be that maybe you, uh, when I say you, I don't necessarily mean you, I just mean in general, uh, one needs to be in their mentor's lap. Maybe their mentor is as big as, you know, a giant tall building and you are completely and utterly just wrapped in their compassion and love. And maybe for weeks on end, that's where the meditation practice happens. And, and, and to feel into that visceral sense of just being held by this energy that you feel so much love from, so much trust, so much compassion. You know, it's like when our wounding is pre-verbal, it's sometimes we have to go back and contact the, those pre-verbal parts of ourselves and bring them into the kind of uh, relationship with our mentor that that is going to work for them. And so when it's pre-verbal and it's in our infant self, you know, our infant needs to be rocked. And for some of us, that might feel like an edgy thing to do, even with this loving mentor. So maybe, you know, uh, the men you're holding the mentor's hand for many weeks. You know, m maybe slowly, maybe just kind of sitting on the edge of their seat, close to them, maybe, you know, you're, you're edging um, 
further and further in, but, it, but to, to really experiment and play with what do these different parts of me need? Um, and that your mentor completely and utterly accepts whatever distance or closeness you need. They are so thrilled and delighted, you know, to show up in exactly the way that you need them to. And so I think that, you know, working with that. And, and so the more that you do that, then the more time your nervous system has the experience of being in a blissful energy system. And it really does get in at a cellular level over time. Yeah. Thank you. There's someone online. Oh, great. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you for this practice. Um, I did not realize that I so needed to feel kind of the love and the connection and the grief of connecting with a former mentor of mine. Um, mm -hmm. And I actually was connecting with the first person to share, and I wondered if we had shared the same mentor. But then when he mentioned that she had gone to clowning school, I was like, okay, well, it's not her. <laughs> <laughs> but some of the qualities were very much the same. Um, so I'm just going to read you the quick little thing I wrote just to share what I was left with. Um, Grief comes unexpectedly, being with you again, your rust sofa, the thriving plants, the stuffed animals, in the back of the other room, the closet we organized together. How is it that you still exuded love and joy and delight while undergoing cancer treatment? With life having felt so heavy this past year, how can I remember the joy and the delight? Mm. Ooh, so this was just a very powerful and moving experience and practice for me, and I don't think I realized that um, grief that was there that needed to be processed, actually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I think that's all I wanted to share. Just a thank you for the invitation to go there. Wow, I so appreciate you reading what you wrote. Thank you. Um, can really feel uh, that connection, right, and, and, and the qualities that you so appreciate in her, and right, and how it seems like it, it was a, a way to then be able to process the, the grief that you're, you're feeling. Um, beautiful, yeah. really. Thank you for sharing that with us. And it is, this practice, it's, it's surprising when we it helps us connect into aspects of ourselves, right? That need some more care, right? That yeah. need some holding. Oh, I didn't know I had this grief. But it's like, oh, but right, but it's, I have the, the right tool, right? I, I have this deep, compassionate wisdom, amazing mentor that's here with me to help me process it. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing how we're doing on time, I know time is. Did anybody, we have a few more minutes, but yeah. Oh, this this guy. Yeah. I think maybe yeah, Kasha. Hi. Um. <laughs> what? It can be. Um, I feel kind of unmoored in like even doing the practice. It's like, like the, the story of like no one wanting to hold me. Like it, it'll, it'll come and go. And, and then, you know, someone, some, someone will come up 
and then there may be a rejection or, or the figure changes or it, it's very hard to hold and the mm -hmm. um the rejecting of any men or like the rejection of self comes up really um strongly so i'm just wondering if you have any guidance there yeah i so appreciate you bringing uh, your vulnerability to to the group um, because this is not uncommon um, that when we are trying to uh, connect into a relationship that uh, feels caring there are parts of ourselves that are like mm, I, don't, I don't know if I can trust that so it becomes difficult to, to hold the image of, of a mentor. So what I would offer in, in that case is, um, you know, it, it could be helpful to envision um, like all pervasive loving awareness that there is just this uh, deep energy that is um, holding you and that energy maybe has a, a color that resonates with you but so that it doesn't necessarily have to be a particular person if that feels uh, you know safer to parts of you um, I don't know if you tried uh, using more of a, um, a spiritual mentor like a Buddha that isn't um, you know, an, uh, an actual uh, human, but, you know, sometimes it can be helpful to, to use, um, you know, a, a figure that really is, you know, a representation of compassion, right, or a representation of wisdom. Uh -huh. um, that can often, uh, you know, be, be easier on for those parts. But I really want to emphasize that this is not uncommon and in a way to, to really, uh, you know, bring that compassion to those parts that find it difficult to, to drink in connection. And so you can even kind of visualize like just little drops, like it doesn't, that part doesn't have to take in, you know, the, the full connection, it can take its time. But maybe there's just like a little, like a drop of, of compassion that it can drink in. Um, but to take your time and, and how brave you are to even try this, you know, with us tonight. To even allow yourself um, this experience of getting to know better. Oh, I have some parts of me that are resistant. You know, and, and don't judge, right? I think, you know, a lot of us have these parts. Yeah. Thank you. Is that helpful? It is. I think um, it can be easy to like intellectualize and go into bypass and be like, oh, I am, I'm that non-dual awareness and then SWAT relational stuff. So, so coming back to like just doing a little drinking, like, okay, a drop like that, I, I can hold on to that um, without the bigger part just smacking everything away. Yeah. Great, great. You see, I mean, this is amazing what all of you are sharing. You see the diversity of experience, right? The practice is bringing up different things for all of us. And I think this is what is so potent too about this practice, right? Is that we each are unearthing parts of ourselves um, that maybe we hadn't visited for a while, maybe read some parts uh, that we weren't entirely aware of. It, it, it's a very powerful practice. Um, so just appreciate the sharing, thank you. Mm. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I just really want to express my gratitude because I feel like there are not a lot of spaces um, where we can share around practices like this and, and what comes up for us and what our experiences are. Uh, so I just really want to name and honor um, that, you know, SF Dharma Collective is offering this kind of space to be able to, to be in community around uh, these kinds of practices and experiences and uh, not, not a whole lot of ways to access that in life. So just really appreciating all of you and, and your shares in this space. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's 8.30, maybe could we just show one last slide? Uh, so just want to thank you all for coming. And then the very <coughs> last slide, I, I, this practice um, is a practice that I do teach as a part of the compassion-based resilience training that I do. And I will be offering a, the nine-week training online starting October 2nd. And we meet Wednesdays from 6 to 7.30. And the fee for the entire group is at $250. So if you're interested, um, my email address is fiona at fionabrandon.com. Feel free to email me or um, you can check out uh, my website is fionabrandon.com. Uh, for those of you online, you, know, you can use that uh, QR code. We'll take you right to the page about it. So something to think about. Um, and, but if, if things come up a few weeks from now, feel free to email me, you know, and i um, happy to, to stay in touch and stay connected. All right, so be well, everyone. Thank you so much.